Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, today in this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, Rabindranath Tagore and um, uh, critique of his ideas on nationalism and uh, also his views on cosmopolitanism. In previous lecture, uh, we have discussed Rabindranath Tagore as a um, uh, thinker, as a poet, as a political philosopher and uh, we situated him in the larger context of um, uh, Indian intellectual tradition as well as his response not just to the Indian condition and Indian challenges, but also the global challenges and we tried to understand his thought and his ideas in the uh, Indian as well as in the global context. And we have discussed his views on nationalism, where he was not just critical of uh, Indian nationalism or any other form of nationalism, but he would develop a, uh, a critique of the very idea of nationalism and that is something very interesting in uh, his thought process. So, he himself was deeply engaged in the social and political issues of India and continued to engage intellectually with some of the burning uh, debates and discussion around social and political philosophy, uh, challenges of India as well as the world. But, uh, uh, but he uh, gradually uh, rescue himself from the active participation in the politics, whether it is the anti-colonial struggle in India or in any kind of political agitation. So, uh, he, he started in the beginning as a very uh, active participant in the social political movement. So, in Swadeshi movement, in some of the, um, uh, some of the um, Congress session in Bengal, he actively uh, participated, but uh, from the Swadeshi uh, days itself on various issues, he gradually developed a intellectual difference, uh, 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 difference from the uh, tactics or the strategies followed by many contemporary political leaders including the Congress and its various leaders. So, uh, we have discussed these things in the previous lecture. Basically, we have focused on his critique of nationalism as an idea and why it is obstructive uh, and lead to moral uh, ethical uh, corruption in individual in the society and we need to, we need to uh, transcend or we do not need to actually follow that path of uh, uh, nationalism. One of the interesting uh, point in uh, Rabindranath uh, thought is and that we have to understand that uh, his intellectual uh, understanding is, uh, uh, is very uh, straightforward and very uh, simple in a sense. It lacks any theoretical pretensions and that allowed him to think, see, uh, think or see things as they are and uh, accordingly he responded uh, to the situation and therefore he considered uh, nation and nationalism as it emerged in the west and uh, uh, he uh, thought that uh, the nationalism that emerged in the west was product of the historical condition and circumstances of the west which is absent in india and if we blindly imitate and follow such uh, idea and apply it in the indian context the outcome will be very destructive and th therefore he believed that it is a passing phase of uh, passing phase of history and not necessarily the inevitable one so uh, uh, his uh, faith was in the larger march of humanity and human civilization rather than any particularities of nation or nationalism uh, 
or any other ethno uh, ethnic uh, uh, particularities and specificities. So, he uh, realized the larger overall march of humanity towards uh, universal humanity, global uh, um, solidarity rather than based on any narrow conception of um, uh, nation or nationalism. So, uh, he wanted Indians not to follow that path which uh, in his opinion lead to lot of destruction, bloodshed and violence in western, uh, western countries which influence uh, the whole world. And therefore, he thought that India can uh, better develop its character, its own identity even without following the path of nationalism. And that is something very interesting and why will, uh, why uh, Rabindranath Tagore becomes such a fascinating intellectual we will discuss when we will discuss his views on cosmopolitanism where contrary to many other scholars, in his opinion, cosmopolitanism is something which is not uh, absence of any particularities or uh, uh, one's own tradition or inheritance. But his views on cosmopolitanism is actually uh, 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 flourishes or emerge out of one's deep engagement in the, uh, his or her particular culture or tradition. So, that is very uh, fascinating in, in uh, Tagore. So, therefore, even on uh, uh, developing India and its character, Indian character, he believed that one can develop it in a better way, taking into account the cultural sensibility of India rather than blindly imitating an idea which emerge, uh, emerge in the modern West and which is very problematic and contrary to the human cooperation solidarity. So, uh, that we have discussed. Today, we are going to discuss critique of uh, Tagore's views on nationalism and his views on cosmopolitanism. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss his views on idea of man and also the debate between Gandhi and Tagore. So, if you look at the critique of Rabindranath Tagore views on nationalism, we find he invited a lot of criticism, not among his own fellow countrymen including Gandhi and many other leaders in India, here does, but also a lot of foreign uh, scholars strongly criticize Tagore for his views on nationalism. First, we find that his strong opposition to uh, nationalism from several western intellectuals, notably even like George Lucas and D. H. Lawrence and many others uh, believed uh, his uh, views on uh, nationalism is too, uh, too uh, poetic, too simple to understand the um, um, nuances, to understand the historicity of this idea or the historical relevance of this idea. So, in uh, Lucas uh, um, criticism, what he writes uh, about Tagore is that uh, he was a wholly insignificant figure who survives by sticking uh, scraps of the Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita into his works uh, amid the sluggish flow of his tediousness. So, basically uh, this criticism against uh, Tagore views on nationalism is uh, a kind of uh, nostalgic uh, or, or deeper um, association or affiliation with India's Upanishadic or Bhagavad uh, Gita and other uh, uh, text which uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore followed. And uh, in Lucas' opinion, uh, which, uh, uh, which, uh, which is like um, Tagore because of his um, association with uh, this um, um, Upanishadic ideals and um, Bhagavad Gita and its ideals, he really uh, failed to uh, understand the um, uh, the contemporary or uh, his own historical time and the necessity of ideas, the uh, uh, problems or the challenges that society in his time is facing and then uh, using an idea which is, uh, uh, which is uh, there in the, um, in the ancient time or in ancient India and seeking to revive it or uh, reapply it in solving the contemporary problems, uh, Lucas and many others find such ideas very, uh, very problematic and um, uh, they also believe that therefore, uh, Tagore do not have 
as much influence as perhaps say Gandhi and many other pragmatists have. There may be a variance in the proportion of criticism against Tagore, but many other scholars also argued that Tagore somewhat remain um, in his um, in his uh, poetic uh, intellectual realm aloof or somewhat indifferent to the political happenings. That is perhaps true to some extent and he did not really actively participate like say Gandhi, Nehru and many other thinkers did, but his experimentation in Santiniketan and his intellectual engagement with uh, these debates are uh, something which remains fascinating and shaped the consciousness of modern Indian uh, self or that is why he, uh, he remains one of the prominent uh, modern Indian, Indian thinker and uh, through Tagore, Gandhi we can better understand uh, the debates that was uh, uh, going on during the um, uh, anti-colonial struggles in India. Like Partha Chatterjee and many others have argued about this unpragmatic or idealistic approach in uh, Tagore when it comes to solving many social and political challenges and that makes him uh, aloof and uh, Ravindra Tagore was himself aware of such unique or aloofness in uh, his political position or intellectual position on some of these debates and we have discussed it in our previous lecture. So, for Lucas because of this uh, sticking or associating with the Upanishadic and other ideals and trying to revive such ideals and trying to use such ideals to solve contemporary problems was a bit uh, problematic for uh, Lucas. Similarly, Lawrence the other scholar criticized Tagore for creating the binary of East and West. So, we understand that the world of early early 19th or 20th century, there is a kind of binary between East and the West, Orient and the Occident and that kind of binary produce a kind of polar opposite uh, civilization and then we try to compare between East and West, uh, try to uh, ensure the dialogue between um, East and West. So, Rudyard, Kimp uh, Rudyard Kipling his famous views uh, that East is East and West is West and never the thou shall meet. So, uh, with that kind of understanding which uh, Tagore criticized and uh, certainly after um, um, Edward Said work on Orientalism, we understand the political part of this kind of knowledge production and creation of binary between, uh, between two uh, kind of uh, hegemonic block east and west which is uh, which is very plural which is layered which is very um, uh, very different heterogeneous and then uh, you um, uh, in the heuristic principle uh, in terms of uh, knowledge production you create two blocks and then try to compare between uh, between the two which uh, help in sustaining the colonial rule or imperialism so um, what we find uh, um, in Tagore was a kind of critique of such kind of uh, aloofness, such kind of differentiation between East and West. But according to Lawrence, he himself uh, get entrapped in this binary of East and West and trying to ensure some kind of dialogue between the two, which is very, uh, which is very problematic in the words of uh, Lawrence. So, we also find is that Tagore's views on nationalism was uh, criticized by many of his Indian colleagues and contemporaries as well. And uh, their critique is like uh, uh, Tagore completely miss this uh, liberating potential of nationalism and therefore, they argued that Tagore's views on nationalism is hopelessly romantic and even illogical. Now, this is very interesting point to think about where as I have said in my previous lecture, there have been different waves of nationalism. So, when Tagore, Gandhi and many other Indian leaders was uh, were engaged in anti-colonial struggle, that was the third wave of um, uh, nationalism and nationalism uh, uh, has many uh, aspect to it. Tagore's understanding was a kind of intellectual um, uh, uh, intellectual engagement with this idea of nationalism, devoid of the uh, practical or the uh, immediate historical circumstances of his time, necessity of his time. 
and uh, uh, therefore, uh, these thinkers believe that uh, it is the luxury for a thinker like uh, Tagore to detach himself from the contemporary uh, requirement or necessity of his countrymen and think about or imagine a world which will be free from all kind of nationalistic particularistic thinking. But for many uh, leaders and thinkers uh, who were involved in day to day politics, uh, uh, they thought there are, uh, there are necessary or there are liberating potential in the nationalism which one cannot ignore. And um, uh, therefore, in their opinion, Tagore's views on nationalism remains very romantic and even illogical. So, despite of so many evils which we have discussed through Tagore in the idea of nationalism, nationalism also develops some solidarity. It has certain cultural roots where people are willing to die for their country. So, that uh, strength comes not just by some kind of mechanical uh, construct of an idea. Unless these ideas have some cultural psychological roots uh, uh, and that makes the idea of nationalism relevant even for our contemporary times. And in many countries, we see uh, the priority of our nation, uh, priority of nation over the other nations. So, America first, India first and such ideas are reflection of such, uh, um, uh, such understanding of nation and nationalism which continue to resonate say, our uh, contemporary times. So, when we were fighting the uh, British, many Indian thinkers believed that the nationalism and India uh, can contribute in the global community only when it achieves uh, uh, political freedom uh, or uh, assert its national identity independent from any foreign rule. And uh, therefore, in their opinion that uh, uh, idea of nationalism has um, enormous liberating potentials, which uh, Tagore uh, seems to completely miss. So, like uh, C. R. Das points out the contradiction in poet's thinking. He pointed out that true assimilation of people's culture could not occur without achieving national independence as suggested by Tagore. So, Tagore uh, wanted to develop a uh, solidarity, which is not fragmented in the narrow domestic walls of nation, nationalism or any other kind of particularities. So, he was talking about universal humanity, uh, the solidarity, the new man, uh, new moral modern man, uh, we will discuss about uh, his views on idea of man. That man is not uh, uh, guided or uh, construct, uh, um, uh, restricted by his or her narrow uh, nationalistic obligation or um, uh, morality or ethics uh, that man uh, uh, consider himself or self as a part of larger global universal self. And uh, uh, therefore, he believed that nationalism is a kind of obstruction in such ideas. But uh, contrary to such view, uh, C. R. Das, Chitranjan Das argues that there is the, uh, the um, uh, contradiction in poets thinking where you cannot have assimilation of people's culture without uh, having the national independence, without achieving the national independence. So, true uh, dialogue will happen only um, when you, uh, when a nation has independence, political independence. Without political independence to think of true dialogue, true assimilation is a, uh, illogical or a kind of uh, wishful thinking uh, for many other thinkers and they find it very contradiction including Gandhi uh, we will discuss in the next, uh, next lecture. Now, they further argue that a nation might find its proper place in the family of nations only when it achieved an identity and what would be that identity? That is something we need to seriously think about and through that understand or analyze Tagore's views on nationalism. So, therefore, it is irrational to think of gaining international unity without attaining national identity. When a group of nation or different cultures tries to develop universal harmony, universal uh, cooperation, that harmony and cooperation or assimilation of differences will not be possible unless one attain or achieve uh, an identity. And that identity at a collective level cannot be caste, cannot be uh, religion, cannot be ethnicity, it has to be 
uh, a nation or national identity. So, uh, many of these uh, leaders believe that to attain international unity, international uh, cooperation or universal um, solidarity, uh, there is a necessary uh, or necessity to achieve national identity uh, in the first place. So, <coughs> what we find is uh, 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 in his uh, approach or um, views on nationalism, Tagore was too poetic in his analysis on nationalism and he did not take into account the various historical forces, especially new forms of nationalist imaginaries like newspapers, novels, textbooks in the age of print capitalism. So, perhaps uh, there is some uh, limitation in terms of uh, uh, assessing the historical forces which uh, enables such kind of imaginaries to uh, be constructed in the first place. So, in uh, Tagore uh, and his uh, engagement with this ideas of nationalism and as we have discussed in previous lecture that uh, uh, Tagore was uh, a unique uh, political thinker. His social and political thought is very different from many other Indian political thinkers precisely because of his uh, poetic or idealistic uh, approach to politics and society which makes him uh, similar to many thinkers certainly like Arvind Ghosh, Mahatma Gandhi and many other uh, modern in, uh, Indian thinkers. But in terms of influence, in terms of actually shaping the pragmatic politics, uh, Rabindranath Tagore remains uh, somewhat aloof, somewhat, um, um, somewhat um, uniquely um, positioned in terms of the larger uh, historical uh, developments that were taking place in India and in the world. So, um, one of the criticism that can uh, that is labeled against uh, Tagore is that uh, because of his poetic approach, he fails to understand the historical forces and these historical forces certainly I have taken from Benedict Anderson who considers uh, or who defines nationalism as an imagined political communities and this imagined political communities um, uh, become possible because there are new uh, developments uh, especially through print capitalism which uh, leads to a standardization of language and the language uh, enables and cut across this um, uh, uh, time and space develop a horizontal solidarity because uh, uh, millions of people not meeting each other in their uh, in their physical life can imagine themselves in their psychology, uh, psychological world, in their mind space with millions of other whom they will never interact, but they can develop a solidarity and emotional bonding uh, with them and that is enabled through the print capitalism. So, uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore and in, in his assessment on nationalism, we, uh, we see that he really do not engage with the historical forces or the historical uh, uh, circumstances which enables and which necessitates this kind of imaginaries to become possible. Now, um, the other um, uh, criticism that can be labeled against um, uh, Tagore's views on nationalism is his over emphasis, in fact obsession with this engagement with East and West and the best example of such engagement and dialogue is his educational experiment in Santi Niketan. So, his obsession with this East West encounter and collective progress of mankind seriously take the issue of he was too engaged with this encounter or encounter with East and West and progress of one common humanity to seriously take the issue of nationalism. And uh, this dialogue or encounter with East and West remains his ideal and therefore, he uh, thought of nationalism a kind of obstruction a kind of restriction to this global universal cooperation to flourish to emerge and uh, that is why perhaps he, uh, uh, he uh, somewhat underestimated the liberating potential of nationalism or necessity of nationalism for a country fighting imperial, uh, imperial rule. And the other point is his alternative programs to nationalism like cooperatives which he, uh, he initiated in many parts of uh, rural Bengal and Swadeshi Samaj failed to energize the masses 
and its uh, success were also very limited. So, uh, that is the other uh, criticism of uh, Tagore. So, in place of nationalism or nationalistic kind of ideology, he favored uh, cooperation among the people for their economic uh, betterment, economic improvement or so they see Samaj to, uh, to, to uh, replace the hierarchy of caste and creed uh, among the people and to develop some kind of solidity, do not really uh, energize the people enough and they were um, uh, deeply influenced and shaped by the new fervor of nation and nationalism in India. So, that is the uh, um, uh, some of the criticism on uh, uh, Tagore's views on nationalism, but um, as we are aware that the nationalism necessarily lead to conflict, uh, violence and uh, we have seen time and again uh, the uh, war, uh, conflict and the violence perpetuated in the name of uh, national superiority and some examples were too brutal uh, to, uh, to even explain such like uh, Nazi German or fascism, uh, which uh, take the nationalism to a very different level of all encompassing uh, control or regimentation of thought and individual lives. So, um, uh, uh, nationalism has dark side of it and Tagore was well ahead of his time to understand or to, to uh, express his reservation or his criticism of nationalism, even when uh, nationalism has some kind of universal acceptance, not just in the uh, anti-colonial uh, uh, countries fighting the imperial West, but also in the West itself. So, Tagore remains in his intellectual engagement with uh, nationalism much ahead of his time, but in the historical circumstances which shaped the politics of his own country, say India, uh, his influence was somewhat, um, uh, somewhat uh, lesser than say uh, the influence, uh, influence of leaders like Gandhi, uh, Nehru and many others. Now, um, uh, we move to his uh, views on cosmopolitanism and that is something which is the cherished ideals of um, Rabindranath Tagore and contemporary times also the challenges that we are facing, say whether it is global warming or threat of nuclear, uh, nuclear warfare or uh, global terrorism or um, hunger or starvation or death. Um, uh, uh, death from something which is curable, curable diseases. So, uh, the issue of sustainable development that requires global cooperation, global ethics and these challenges cannot be tackled by any country or a group of country, even if it is uh, very powerful economically and militarily. It requires global cooperation, global, um, uh, uh, global uh, association among the uh, uh, nation. So, um, cosmopolitan ideals are very um, relevant in contemporary times, but these ideals are not new. So, in the Greek time or in the Roman, um, uh, Roman time uh, and also in uh, ancient Indian ideals of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, uh, these ideals of world as a one family uh, or this contemporary phase of globalization certainly makes this ideal more, more more profound, more relevant than it was in any previous phase of human history, because of the circumst uh, uh, the challenges that our uh, contemporary global world is facing, which requires, which necessitates global cooperation and uh, different uh, countries coming together. So, um, uh, Tagore was uh, more uh, for such global cooperation. Uh, um, global ethics and developing a kind of um, uh, 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 ethics or morality, which will transcend the particularities of nation and nationalism. So, I um, will uh, begin uh, his views on cosmopolitanism with this, uh, with this phrase or quotation from Tagore, where he says uh, that he who sees all beings in his self and his self in all the beings does not hate anyone and knows the truth. So, that is the uh, basis of his philosophy, his philosophy of self, his views on self, which he uh, explain as a being uh, 
which transcend his own particularities, his own local uh, uh, circumstances, local cultural or uh, traditional setup, and um, and um, include uh, all the beings in his self and his self in the all beings. So that complete immersion of self in the other or in the uh, other uh, human being. Uh, allow that individual not to hate the other, but to develop a kind of mutual trust, dialogue and love. That is the basis for human cooperation, human solidarity that Tagore believes and nationalism or any other kind of particularities obstruct such mutual uh, cooperation, dialogue or trust uh, to emerge. So, he believes that um, the one who sees all beings in his self and his self in the all beings does not hate anyone and knows the truth and that is the fundamental truth. Uh, so, Tagore despite of so many wars, conflicts, uh, world wars, uh, violence uh, and all kind of mechanical repetition of um, everyday life uh, remain hopeful and uh, that hope was in universal cooperation, in universal, um, universal uh, solidarity, universal uh, manhood or universal humanity and that uh, that was uh, for him the truth of human existence not the war not the conflict not the hate with others which is uh, somewhat um, uh, fanned by this nationalist uh, nationalist fervor and he wanted this kind of man to emerge so ravinna tagore um, offers a new cosmopolitan many scholars like Martha Sinusbaum argues that social and political thought in Tagore enables us to criticize patriotism and in place of that develop a cosmopolitan imaginary and uh, we will discuss more on that. So, what we find in Tagore's views on cosmopolitanism is the possibility or enabling of developing this cosmopolitan imaginaries for our 21st century world and he was articulating it in the very beginning or the first two, three decades of 20th century. So, this cosmopolitan morality which is there in Tagore is radical departure from many of his contemporaries which were deeply engaged with the national question or the question of nationality. So, he was a departure for such kind of, uh, such kind of thinking. He uh, advocated a form of cosmopolitanism which is the idea that all human being is a world citizen and owe primary allegiance to the world community. So, uh, the moral obligation of human being is not to his or her own community or nation, but to a global community which is the humanity at large and uh, 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 Tagore wanted to develop that kind of um, uh, solidarity, that kind of universal humanity and uh, um, um, therefore, many uh, scholars like Martha Sinusbaum as I have said believe that uh, the social and political thought of Tagore can be a very, um, uh, very solid basis to uh, develop uh, cosmopolitan imaginaries in the 21st century. Now, he wanted to uh, go beyond the nationalism to a global cosmopolitanism and transcending the cultural boundaries is required to develop this uh, universal human. So, that transcending the limitation of particularities or nation is required to develop this uh, global cosmopolitan universal uh, uh, humanity. So, uh, again to quote from Tagore, uh, he writes, neither the colorless vagueness of cosmopolitanism nor the fire self idolatry of nation worship is the goal of human history and India has been trying to accomplish her task through social regulation of differences on the one hand and the spiritual recognition of unity on the other. Now, that encapsulates his thought on cosmopolitanism where he believes that the colorless vagueness. So, to explain you this idea on cosmopolitanism, many people argue that cosmopolitanism can be defined as a uh, imaginary which uh, not just transcend the uh, local or the national, but also emerge in the absence of such local or, uh, or national. So, the other way uh, to put it is a kind of detachment 
a kind of uh, moral, emotional, psychological detachment from one's roots. So, uh, for many uh, liberal scholars like Kantian abstraction or stoic uh, philosophers, uh, uh, cosmopolitanism or cosmopolitan person is someone who do not belong or remain attached to a particular national, local, cultural, community uh, setup and imagine himself, develop the emotional or psychological outlook to consider himself as a global citizen completely detached from any kind of particularities. Tagore is cautioning against such kind of colorless vagueness of cosmopolitanism on the one hand and the fire self idolatry of nation worship on the other. So, the other side of this kind of imagination is the fires worshipping of national, uh, uh, national identity and he believed that both of these extreme opposites is actually contrary to the global goal of human history and he believed that this global cosmopolitan attitude and imaginary is possible when one is willing to live with the difference, adjust with the difference and develop a common unity. So, he thought or he uh, believed that India can play a significant role in uh, regulating its own differences uh, and also understanding the spiritual uh, unity or recognition of this spiritual unity as, as its necessary or inevitable goal. And that kind of approach uh, towards um, India's position in a international uh, setup or in a um, global uh, community of nation, you will find in many other thinkers as well, be it Nehru, Gandhi, Rajaram Roy and many Arvindo Ghosh, many others believed in this unity of mankind, a spiritual unity. So, the country uh, remains different, they represent their own self, their own identity, but they have to ultimately recognize uh, the necessity uh, of global cooperation to tackle many of the global challenges. So, uh, uh, Tagore believes that India uh, can uh, and should manage these social uh, differences as well as understand this spiritual unity. And he further writes in developing this unity in his work, The Way to Unity, that I have come to feel that mind, which has been matured in the atmosphere of profound knowledge of its own country and of the perfect thoughts that have been produced in that land, is ready to accept and assimilate the cultures that come from other countries. Now, here he is making a departure from many other cosmopolitan imagination or thinking, uh, whereas for him the role or significance of one's own tradition, one, one's own inheritance are equally important uh, for developing the cosmopolitan, uh, uh, cosmopolitan imagination or developing uh, universal solidarity and to understand the other culture and assimilate the other culture, accommodate the other culture. So, for him the knowledge of one's own country. So, for Tagore, cosmopolitanism is not negation of one's own culture, one's own tradition, but to develop a sensibility which is immersed in one's own culture and tradition and yet open or flexible to accommodate and accept from the other culture and other tradition and that way one can uh, think of developing the global uh, uh, global cooperation and uh, universal uh, uh, universal um, uh, solidarity. Uh, he spoke of the intellectual uh, union of East and the West and he wanted that the best of each culture should compensate inadequacy in the other culture. So, in Tagore it is not the absence of one's own tradition, one's own culture, but once uh, identity is shaped by th this thing, uh, th their own culture, their own tradition and yet uh, they are willing to accommodate and learn from other culture. And this uh, mutual trust and uh, encounter in Tagore's opinion will help in solving the in inadequacy in any other uh, particular culture or uh, uh, individual culture. So, that way uh, the uh, different cultures or adjustment with different cultures will lead to mutual give and take, mutual dialogue and it will enrich or strengthen the global uh, solidarity or global uh, 
attitude and um, uh, uh, sensibilities which uh, uh, cannot be uh, developed on this mechanical uh, statistic uh, statist approach to uh, global uh, global world or global cosmopolitan world. So, um, uh, Tagore was someone who also emphasized the contribution of non-Western culture, which is denied by many Western thinkers and their Europeanization of world. So, the West is not a kind of geographical expression, but it is there in the intellectual psychological world of non-Western countries and societies. Tagore believed in this contribution of non-Western cultures in uh, developing such global cosmopolitan uh, thinking and tradition. So, it continues um, uh, from what we are just discussing that um, the knowledge of particular cultural tradition is the basis for understanding others and it can help in relating others morally. So, one's own culture, the particular culture, Tagore is not negating or undermining, but he considers it as a building block, as a basis to understand other morally or interact with others in a more accommodative way, which help in removing the suspicion and mistrust and um, uh, one way uh, dialogue uh, and discussion. So, for Tagore, cosmopolitanism does, uh, does not derive its justification through the theoretical contemplation of abstractions. So, as I was saying, many uh, thinkers like Kant, Kingdom of Ends and many others theorized what or Rousseau theorized about this um, uh, cosmopolitan uh, attitude and um, uh, sensibilities by abstracting the concepts, the question of cosmopolitan ses uh, sensibilities. But for Tagore, it is a kind of practical way of achieving that, uh, that solidarity and I think um, in Tagore, one can find the resources for developing such uh, uh, practical uh, sensibilities or approach to develop uh, cosmopolitan imaginary. So, uh, it is not the abstraction, but a kind of achievable in the real practical world by understanding one's particular culture but willing to understand the others and also then uh, giving and taking in the mutual trust and cooperation. So, for Tagore, the motivation to be a cosmopolitan is ultimately grounded in the existential orientation, a way of being in the world and that way of being in the world is also to be rooted in one's own culture and that is why his views on cosmopolitanism is also considered as a uh, rooted cosmopolitanism. So, he travelled the world, he uh, 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 understand and develop a dialogue or friendship with other uh, culture, other uh, continents, other individuals, but remain deeply and emotionally uh, connected with his own native land Bengal or India. So, that he does not see as a obstruction or as a problem. So, loving one culture, immersing oneself with on one's culture, understanding its thought, developing one's sensibility from their own culture is in no way an obstruction to develop a global cosmopolitan uh, approach and outlook. That is something very unique in the uh, Tagore's um, views on cosmopolitanism. And his faith in the essential unity of mankind influences his vision about the historic battle of the nationalism of the East against the imperialism of the West. And that is perhaps his obsession and um, belief and he was so convinced about this uh, human uh, unity or hum, uh, un, uh, unity of the humankind that he somewhat uh, undermined the uh, historical role of nationalism in the East to fight the imperialism of the West that was going on in many Asian and African countries. Now, Tagore's cosmopolitanism is also in part a consequence of his philosophical and historiographical conviction that social life cannot be reductively captured by the statist conception of history. So, he believed uh, uh, as we have discussed in previous lecture, the problem of India is not political, but a social, uh, a social problem and that social problem cannot be tackled by the state and its intervention or mechanical uh, uh, mechanical uh, approach, but uh, by uh, developing the solidarity based on the cultural sensibility of the people 
in, and the idea of so this is some merge and other things is reflection of such uh, such approach. So what we find is Tagore's peerless thinking on the philosophical underpinnings of cosmopolitanism at the level of pratyahik. That means every day, every dayness resonates with great force in a world that is simultaneously wrapped by the contrary attitudes of globalization and various form of particularism. So in the contemporary times, we find this kind of um, uh, tussle, this kind of opposition or contradiction between uh, the global forces of capital, goods, sensibilities, movement, uh, social movement on the one hand and assertion of particularities on the other. And that makes uh, uh, Tagore's views on cosmopolitanism even more relevant today than it was when he was writing in articulating his thought. So indeed the future of the planet rests upon how well we can mediate between these two opposite polarities that is uh, there in the world. So some scholars call Tagore as rooted or realistic cosmopolitanism uh, rather than someone merely contemplating or abstracting his thought on cosmopolitanism, which means that those who respect the variety of tradition and nationalities, but also believe in the universal values that all people in all countries should accept and that is the way to understand Tagore's cosmopolitan universality. So uh, his cosmopolitan universality is not to uh, reject the particular culture or particular nationalities. but to understand that particular sensibilities and develop to and not to ignore, underestimate the universal value of universe, the solidarity or the unity of a human civilization. And that is the way for developing cosmopolitan universality and makes him more applicable and relevant than those who are merely contemplating about cosmopolitan thought and imagination. So finally, uh, for Tagore, underpinning the cosmopolitan sensibility rests a poetics of humility flagging the limits of the human when faced with the world seemingly limitless diversity. The recognition of limits caused the cosmopolitan desire to, to emerge. So that is he believes something which is natural flow of uh, uh, human uh, imagination, human solidarity which made begin with uh, their own particular cultural national outlook, but it will ultimately emerge in a global cosmopolitan universal outlook as well. So uh, that is um, uh, our views on uh, Tagore's um, uh, uh, understanding of cosmopolitanism and why he remains uh, a very significant um, um, thinker, uh, not just for his views on criticism uh, on views on nationalism, but also uh, due to uh, his acute or correct um, um, understanding of cosmopolitanism as a way, way forward, uh, forward for the world and understanding the uh, unity of humankind as the basis or the real truth and that should develop on trust, uh, love or mutual cooperation and he consider uh, considered um, uh, nationalism or uh, uh, or obsession with the nationalism as a obstruction to such kind of uh, cooperation to emerge. And on this point, one is uh, it is interesting to note that he predicted in 1920s or 30s this uh, possible cooperation between the fighting nation of Europe. So when one of his friend asked him. Uh, about um, how he can remain so uh, peaceful uh, in the circumstances when the world is uh, fighting or in, uh, engaged in so much of uh, conflicts and violence. Tagore was uh, deeply, uh, uh, deeply uh, uh, influenced by that question and then he uh, responded that, that this is merely a kind of passing phase of human history and ultimately uh, uh, the nation of the world will realize the necessity of cooperation to tackle the individual and the collective problem. So on this views on cosmopolitanism, you can look at some of these works uh, like uh, Ramchandra Guha and Pentham. We have been following it in many of the lecture. For this views on cosmopolitanism, you can particularly look at Rustam Barucha, another Asia, Ravinna Tagore and Okakura Tenshin and also this very interesting work by Sachidanand Mohanty 
and his chapter on the world in a nest, the cosmopolitanism of Rabindranath Tagore. This chapter is from his book on cosmopolitan modernity in early 20th century India. And also Ashish Nandi, the illegitimacy of nationalism, Rabindranath Tagore and his politics of self. You can look at and also a very interesting article on Tagore's conception of cosmopolitanism by Sarnindranath Tagore. So these are some of the readings on Tagore's views on cosmopolitanism. And if you have any question, comments, please feel free to write. Thank you.